G'day, Dave here. And during the week, our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, said that Australia didn't have any slavery. Now, that was a comment that got him into a bit of strife. Uh, the media picked it up. The opposition attacked him for it. And he's since apologised for the statement because, of course, the reality is we have had slavery. Uh, you see the images of the Kanakas on the cane field. You see Aboriginal men and women in chains. And there is slavery, and it's part of our sorry story. But I believe that there's a slavery still, and it's a slavery that's not just in Australia. Uh, it's not simply one race. Uh, it's not a black thing or a white thing. It's a slavery that we see in every human heart because it's the slavery of discontent. We're not content and we're enslaved to our discontent. And you see it by how vulnerable we are to those who are offering what we think will make us happy, make us satisfied, make us secure. So in a world that is driven by fashion, we believe that if we get the latest fashions, if we keep up with the jeans, with the jackets, with the shoes, with all the right sort of clothing, then we'll be content. Or if we get the latest car, uh, the right colour, the right type, whether it's diesel or hybrid or electric or petrol, if we get the right type of computer, Mac or PC, laptop or desktop, if we get the right kind of bicycle, if we get the right kind of surfboard. And of course, in a world that says that you'll be more content if you stay young, then of course we've got to get the skin cream that makes us look young. And if we're told that we'll be more content if we have the perfect body, then we fall prey to the advertising for diet supplements and gym memberships and so forth. We are discontent believing that things like coffee and beer and wine and shampoo and phones and home appliances and the right online targeted, targeted marketing will make us content. And of course, Google and all of its algorithms feed off our slavery to discontent. Friends of ours who've worked overseas in the developing world, in places like the Congo and in Cambodia, where if they can get a product of a particular type, they're grateful. Came back to Australia before Christmas and the shelves are just absolutely plastered, not with one thing, but with 20 types of everything. And seeing the massive paper in the letterboxes and seeing the invasion on the TV of advertising, you've got to have this, you need this, this will make you happy, this will make you well, this will make you satisfied, this will make you secure, and we fall prey to the slavery of discontent. And it's built in, isn't it, to the fabric of our society. In fact, I think our economics, our whole economy is addicted to it, uh, the consumer industry. But it's not just money. We might be slavery to the discontent of uh, an unsatisfying relationship uh, or experiences. We've just got to be able to do this or perhaps to have a particular type of job or maybe even slavery to the discontent of being unsatisfied with the church that I belong to and looking around and shopping for that perfect church. Well, friends, the great news is that there is a solution for this, for this problem of discontent and the Apostle Paul has learned the secret of contentment. Uh, read with me from verse 10. It says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned but had no opportunity to show it. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry. Whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, let's set the context again. The Apostle Paul's in prison. Uh, the Philippians have been able to provide for him, to actually help him out in his need. But what he's telling them here is that the secret to contentment doesn't lie in his circumstances. Because he's learnt to be content whether he is in need or has plenty whether he's well fed or not, whether he has everything that supposedly he wants or whether he's going without. And friends, the secret to his contentment doesn't come in his circumstances. And we can be wealthy, we can be bankrupt. We can have a, a great job, we can have 
lost that job. We might pass or we might fail. We might make the first or we might be left in the fourth. We may be very healthy and active in life. We may be struck down sick and confined to bed. We might be wearing country road classics or best than less offcuts. But friends, whatever we have, we can learn to be content. See, the danger in our slavery to discontent is that we think that the secret to contentment lies in changing our circumstances. The, what I might call the if only trap. If only I'd married better. If only I could get that new car. If only I could renovate the kitchen. If only I could get to go on holidays. If only our church had a better children's program. If only, if only, if only. And we think that we'll somehow be content if only the circumstances change. And Paul says it's not the circumstances. No, the secret to contentment doesn't lie out there. It lies in here, in our hearts and in our minds. Notice what he says there in verse 10. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. And then down in verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, that verse, verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength, has become a popular verse for many athletes. Uh, Certainly, it's become famous in the rugby world uh, through the Fiji Sevens, I think, originally. Uh, One of the greats of uh, Sevens rugby writing Philippians 4.13 on an armband. Some have it tattooed. Some have the whole verse tattooed. But I don't think it's saying that you'll become a great rugby player through God who gives you strength, but rather that you can bear up under all circumstances because God can enable you to do that, whether you're sick or whether you're well, whether you're poor or whether you're affluent, whether things are going well for you or whether you're in struggle street. You can learn the secret of contentment because God will work in you powerfully to give you the strength to bear up under whatever circumstances you're in, to be able to rejoice in the Lord greatly, knowing that he is at work through all that's happening, that he will meet all of your needs. Verse 19, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God is the one who will take care of us. It's not better circumstances that enable contentment, but being able to rest securely, confidently, assuredly that God is at work in all things. He will work good and we can trust him in that. And so we can be content that whatever we're going through, God is working for the good of those who love him. So friends, do you know contentment? Or are you living in that slavery to discontent? Are you in the trap of that if only this happened, then you'd be okay? Well, let's be liberated from that. It's not what goes on out there that makes us content. It's our heart and it's our heart's desire. And it's the focus of our heart, what we fill our mind with. Do we focus our thoughts upon God? Because as we do, and in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have every evidence that he's for us. So we can trust in whatever circumstances we're in. And that is the secret to contentment.